Howdy there folks, this is Lapidary Dave. Don't forget to subscribe and to subscribe to Eric's channel for your chance to win this fantastic Uperlite. Leave a number in the comment section down below, 1 through 4,000. The winner will be chosen in about 48 hours. Also, follow Eric on his Uperlite adventures via Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram. There will be some more information on the giveaway down in the description below. Every once in a while you get a little purple feldspar in there. Whoa. You got a little orbit of that on each end. And then the nice awesome orange in the middle. That is amazing. Yeah, it's really cool stuff. And you got these big boys up in front. This one's 10 pounds, 11 ounces. This one is six and a half pounds. It's a cyanite rich in fluorescent sodalite, so it looks like a piece of granite, but it has zero quartz in it. So it's much softer. It's only a five on the Mohs scale. Cuts and polish is really nice. So here's a cut and polish piece. Jeez. It yeah, glows like fire. fire. This rock cocoa. Uh, I find them on the shores of Lake Superior in Michigan. Yeah. But you can find them on the shores of Lake Superior, Lake Michigan, Lake Huron, Lake Erie. You can find them in seven different states and Canada. Buy one of these <laughs> so and we go hunting. The Buy one of these and go hunting. Yeah, yeah, yeah she found a bunch. Oh really? Yeah. yeah they are an absolute blast to go yeah. night picking for. How long have you been hunting for them? Well, I discovered them in 2017, in the spring of 2017. So three years. This will be my third year now. Have people yeah. been hunting for them a uh, much longer than that? No because uh, the first two seasons I did this, I was the only person on the beach anywhere looking for these things. And then um, last year, had about 10,000 people on the beaches last year. What a blessing. Uh, anywhere on Lake Superior, Lake Michigan, Lake Huron, Lake Erie, that there's stones. Anywhere the glaciers took stones from Canada. So glacial deposits. Yeah, but that's 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 a whole different country, different deposit. You see, these are a five on the hardness scale, right? Yep. So they they take a great polish. They're really easy to to uh, carve and make into spheres or into jewelry, and they don't fracture very easy. They hardly ever have fractures in them at all. And like even if you take a stone and you drop it, I mean it doesn't break the stone. You know, the stone's still perfect and. No, no chips or nothing so they're very resilient compared because like if i did that with one of my agates half time it'd fall in half oh no you know because they have <laughs> fractures and a lot of times you can't see the fractures but when you drop them they break you know what inside of it is glowing it's sodalite so it's a fluorescent sodalite from michigan and i didn't want to call it just sodalite because sodalite's usually blue and you find that everywhere here at the show you can go find some sodalite and it's blue color these aren't blue at all. I have every color from uh, like a pinkish, almost, look, almost looks like a pink granite to black, gray colored. You know, some of these are black and white. And then every once in a while, and then every once in a while you get some like these, like these guys. And they're tan with black and white speckles. And this one's got some red in it. Okay, so now watch how amazing this guy is. It's gonna overload your camera. Oh, it sure did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. And then this is my best raw stone. So I speared the one, and the Japanese call this one the dragon's egg. So some of this stuff can be pretty amazing. But these are probably the two I, best I've ever found. Did you give it the name Uperlite? Yes. Oh, yeah. fantastic. You're yeah. the original. <laughs> yeah. So um, when I discovered these things, I sent them off for testing and they told me that they were a cyanite rich in fluorescent sodalite. I said, that's the worst rock name ever. And I didn't want to just call it sodalite because there's sodalite all over the world. Afghanistan and Greenland and all, all over the place. Some of it fluoresces, some of it doesn't, but most of it's just a blue color. I wanted a stone, this, a stone name that said where they're from and what they do. So I'm a UP from, uh, UPR from the UP of Michigan, so I wanted Uper light for where I'm from and light they light up. Dang. Yeah. What a blessing. 
I had no idea. I've been chatting chatting with you for a few days, and I had no idea that you gave it the name. Oh, you're yeah. the original, and you were the first person to start finding them. Yeah. Now other people could have found them before I did, but no one ever had them sent in, tested, and verified to be a new find in Michigan. Well, you did all the work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they were they were lazies. And didn't do it. So there's a lot of people that say they found them before I did. Yeah, sure they could have, but they didn't. They didn't get credit for it. Do you mind if you, uh, you if you shine a light on this beautiful pickguard? Oh yeah. I'll show you that. This is a guitar I built back about ten years ago, and I put a Uperlite pickguard on it and a Uperlite truss drive cover on it up there. And you built the axe. Oh yeah. <laughs> that thing is brutal. Oh, very nice. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah, but all the wood burned artwork is my artwork, and then my friend Lisa, she did all the wood burning for me. What so she recreated my artwork for me. Um, can I trouble you to hit these picks? Yeah. Um, let me see if. You got them pretty thin. Kind of hard to see, but. The price tags there like to. I only have four picks left. My really good picks, somebody stole yesterday. Oh, no, brother. Yeah. So these four are left, they're 20 bucks a piece. Yeah, you got them at a great gauge. It's like 1.5 maybe, almost I'm two. Not sure, those are kind of thicker ones. I had some thinner ones, like this one's a little bit thinner. But this one's the one I'm gonna keep for myself. Ooh, that's daddy's pick right yeah, there. Yeah. <laughs> Hot damn. And you were on a Travel Channel a few days ago yep, and on Jewelry on, TV. Yeah, I was on Jewelry TV yesterday on uh, their YouTube channel. So go over and hit JTV. I'm the newest video on there. And then uh, it premiered on Wednesday. I was on Paranormal Caught on Camera. Oh, fantastic. Yes. Back in June, I took out a Uperlite night picking tour with three other people. And we saw some amazing, crazy lights in the sky that I cannot explain. And I got them on video. What a blessing. Yeah. So it's what? been, uh, it's been um, investigated now by the Travel Channel and by MUFON, the Mutual UFO Network. I'm not going to say it was aliens. I'm not going to say what it was, but I'll tell you what it wasn't. It wasn't drones. It wasn't planes. It wasn't St. Elmo's Fire. It wasn't lanterns. Raining, windy at 1 o'clock in the morning and moving super fast and floating up in the air doing weird stuff. And I filmed a freighter, an uh, iron ore freighter called the Spruce Glen going right underneath the lights. And that's what I got on TV for. So it's pretty cool. What a blessing. Yeah. And you are Eric. Yep. Yeah, there's an I on the end of my name, but they ran out of space there. <laughs> my last name's a little too long. Do you ever sell online? Yes. Yep. Uh, I have a website, www.uperlights.com. I have everything on there. Same prices as here. Jeez Louise. And uh, I do night picking tours May through October. My 2020 schedule won't be put up until April. Okay. Hey, did you guys, hey, hey, you doing that? You see these? The great big ones. What a fantastic gentleman. Yeah, all of these guys here. This one's a thousand, this one's 650. Well, I'm an agate picker and I went on the beach with a long wave UV light looking for agates and I ended up finding these instead. And we find nice little tiny guys right on the beach. These are not tumbled, they're not broken with a hammer, all natural right off the beach. Do you want me to hold these? Okay. These are all from Lake Superior, but you can find them in Lake Superior, Lake Michigan, Lake Huron, and Lake Erie. <laughs> oh, the milled beads are awesome. <laughs> Well, you don't have to look at the labels, the pale ones, huh? Yeah. I guess, you want to take some? Yeah. I'll put one on my card. $200 for this beautiful sculpture. Here tells you how to watch my document. Yep, Uperlite from Michigan. So they're a cyanite rich and fluorescent salt light. I discovered them in 2017. I was out picking agates, looking for agates and peas, and I found these instead. So I ended up, I ended up having to send them in, get them tested and verified that they were a new find in Michigan. And then last year I was in Rock and Gem magazine for both April and May's issue. Just so you folks know, yeah, it's not an orange light, it's a black PBS. light. You can watch my documentary. It's not an orange light shining on the rock, it's a purple light. And then last week I was on the Travel Channel and yesterday I was I believe on the, the gentleman said it was long wave UV. So are they named after you? No, no, no. A Uper is a person that lives in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Oh, okay. So okay. we're called Upers up there. So Uper for where I'm from and the light they light up. 
I didn't want to pick my own name like Rintamaki Light or something. That didn't, that didn't roll off the tongue like you were like. Yeah, flash off the word. This stone here I was going to show you, <coughs> this one came from Canada from the source. I went with Lake Superior State University's geology department and we went up to the source of these stones and we did two different expeditions. This came from a railroad cut where a railroad had went through this giant oak crop of this stuff and this is a broken piece that was dynamited oak, right? Well, there's fractures in here and you'll see them. Let me see if I can find one. Right here, you're going to see some little lines right in here. Oh, wow. Okay, so that is an ancient fracture that filled in with sodalite. So now, when it got dynamited, the dynamite took the easiest path of resistance. So it would take a fracture plane. So that's what this is, is a fracture plane. So there was a fracture going through here, and it all lights up. Jeez. So you can see on the edge. So there's giant walls of this stuff up in Canada. Did you ever see any walls with your light? Yep, it's awesome. I can show you some pictures that I have. I plan on uh, going back up there this spring and doing a whole video series of what we're working on up there. I can't wait to see Because I want to be able to do tabletops and bar tops and everything else. Oh man, Michigan loves Michigan so much. I bet you they're going to do fantastically. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did you ever go mushroom hunting? Oh yeah. yeah. Did you get a lot up there? Oh yeah, a lot of the morels, yeah, from like mid-May, late-May. <laughs> Mushroom picking and going out here for like picking it up. Yeah, it's pretty fun. Just put the polish. And you say that you just take it to 3,000 grit, right? Yeah, I, I, I don't even go above 3,000. Like on an agate, I'd usually go to cerium oxide, maybe a 14,000 or a 25,000 grit wheel. But these these are all just normal, up to 3,000, that's it. It's yeah. like a... <laughs> It's like a store, Star Wars thing. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody gets in your space. And uh, if you go to uh, Brian Major's channel, The Crystal Collector, he's also got a couple videos he did with me up there. Fantastic. And if anybody out there has a podcast that wants me on as a guest, I'll come on. This is your contact information, right? Yeah, Skype in and... Do them all over the place. I was on a on one called the Electric Universe that was really cool. Yeah. And if you go to Uper Lights on Facebook, it's my Facebook group. I have about thirteen thousand followers on there. Uh, I update everything on there. When I'm doing tours, new items on my website, everything, and, and all the TV appearances and stuff. I list everything on there. And every gem show I'm going to be at, all on the Uper Lights. Facebook page. Will you be in Denver this year? Yes. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. I'm going to come bug the crap out of you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. All the beads and necklaces were all done by Bob Wright That's from so cool. uh, Superior, Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. I like that you um, different varieties of it, the different yeah. colors. How about mine? Yeah, cause some people like them just for the way they look in natural daylight, you know. It doesn't always necessarily have to be under UV. Come to life. The big ones like this are 200. They're all done by hand, not they're not machine done like the cheapy ones. I love the pickard idea. If you're playing yeah. a cool club, you're going to yeah. be blinging. <laughs> yeah. Well, what I plan to do is do like a Fender Stratocaster, uh, a Fender Strat, a Les Paul, and maybe like a P bass. So you got your four most popular guitar and then the one bass model. And uh, do a pickguard and volume knobs and uh, Ooh, the knobs. The tuning knobs. So. <laughs> Uh, as soon as I get home, if the stuff is there, I'm going to start making volume knobs because I want to do volume knobs with that guitar, but um, 
You think you'll make witch hats like those? Yeah, the bell the bell knobs like that. And then I'll make the ones that are just uh you know just a cylindrical. So, yeah, yeah, telly style, like just yeah, the maybe make some that look like dice or you know whatever, make some square ones and <laughs> yeah. Who uh, is making the bears? Uh those two were made by a guy named Dan Hooker. That light won't work for crap. Oh, That's no. a regular black light, but if you <laughs> use that, we're much better. Uh, those were done by Dan Hooker, and then all these carvings in here were done by Brian Yatisi. He's a Zuni carver from New Mexico. He did all the owls and the little bears in here. Oh wow, didn't even notice the owl. It was glowing so much. Great work. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, that crow, a raven. And I'm gonna give I'm gonna give my hand a shot at this whole carving thing when I get home. I teach a lot of folks how to cut, carve, and cab and stuff yep. online. It's easier than coloring in the lines because if you mess up, at least you get something when you're done with it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, cabochons I can do. I can do that all day long, but I've never tried my hand at carving before. Mm -hmm. So uh, Dan showed me his way that he does it. Brian showed me his way that he does it. So I'm going to kind of take their two different styles, mix them together, and kind of make my own. So. Well, you're the kind of gentleman that doesn't half it for sure I just from looking around <laughs> Do a little here, trial man. and error and give it a shot man you know i was pretty artistic in high school and you know went to school for music so i'm a very artistic person so carving should come pretty easy to me i would think man that's so affordable yeah 50 bucks set in sterling silver great antiquing on it too whoever made it yeah, uh, my friend great. from Taiwan made those. Fantastic. Yeah, he did the stone work and the silver work. They're so good over there. Yeah. Um, what kind of blades are you using for your knives? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, my buddy Jeff Smith does all the knives. Oh, that's an axe right there. They look really high quality. And we got this guy on here. This one's pretty cool. we we'll move these guys over show you guys some stuff here. So check that guy out. Man, that leather smells so good. Yeah. And these are the last of my knives until my new ones get here today or tomorrow. Jeff sent me some new ones out on Monday. What are your favorite black lights for hunting? Uh, this right here. This is the new Convoy C8. So this is $100, comes with four batteries, a charger, copy my article, and a Uperlite stone for 100 bucks. Guaranteed to life, you ever drop it, break it, anything happens to it, I'll replace it for free. Jeez. And I have some lights that cost way more. This is a, a light my friend Chris Cooper built for me, and this is a Raymond Wu. This has three LEDs, this has four, but this will shine further than both of them. And these are way, way more expensive for the big lights. This is much lighter to carry, only takes two batteries versus four, has one LED versus three or four LEDs, but this shines the light much further away. Can folks buy these on your website? Yes, yep, same price on my website, $99.99, and uh, guaranteed for life, you ever drop it, break it, anything happens to it, send it back to me, I'll send you a brand new one. And that's www.uperlights.com. Great card. <laughs> Thank you. It's got my tour information on the back. And then on the bottom, it tells you how to watch my documentary called Light Up the North, The Story of Uper Lights. Just type that into YouTube. You can watch it for free. And I also have a free DVD on my YouTube channel. It's called Uper Light Hunting 101. Just type in Uper Light Hunting 101. It's 25 minutes or so long. I teach you everything. What lights to buy, where to go, what beaches to hit, what states I found them in, what lakes I found them on. Uh, all the state rules and state laws for Michigan, what to bring with you, how do you, you know, bring a glow stick and stick it in the beach. Everything you would never think of, I tell you, everything possible for going out looking for these things. All for free. What a blessing. Yeah. You. Man. Eric, I can't thank you enough for letting me bother you with the camera. Yeah, yeah. no problem. <laughs> You're a real big blessing. And thank you for doing all the work. Yeah, Sh yeah. Bringing, bringing these beauties to the world. Thank you, brother, so much. Yeah. What booth are you in? 
P33 at the Kino Gym Show. Oh, right. <laughs>